again, squaddies. Welcome back to the Shattered Isles, always AMD, and normally you'd see me dropping in and do a hunt right about now. But things are going to be a little bit different, because this is not, as you can probably tell from the title, part of the Fearless Slayer's bestiary. Instead, this is another weapon guide. I hadn't expected to do one of these for a while. But luckily, last Wednesday, October 3rd, something new came into Ramsgate. A while before that, you can kind of see off to the left, behind me, the Iron, uh, the iron Sides. And that is a ship from Ostia, which we hear a little bit about, it's part of the backstory of the game. They arrived, but last Wednesday, October 3rd, they finally released something new. Specifically, they released these babies on my, you see there, one on my right leg and one on my back. These are the Ostian Repeaters, the brand new weapon in Dauntless. They are unique in several ways. First off, they are a solely ranged weapon. Now, I say solely ranged because we already had a couple of ranged weapons, with the chain blades being kind of a ranged melee, and my favorite, the Warpike, having the charged blast you can do once you build up enough and store it. These, however, have no melee option, and in fact, they play very differently from any of the other weapons. One of the biggest things that you'll see that makes them very different from other weapons, I'll go ahead and show you here in the loadout. First off, uh, what I'm using... Actually, I'll explain that once we get going. Now, you can infuse them with cells, just like other weapons, but then you also have this Customize button. You might be wondering, what's this? Well, what's this? Here, let me show you. You click, you click Customize, and you have four parts. Your repeaters are made of up to four parts. Now, when you first start, you're only going to have three. You're going to have... I'll actually go ahead and switch it all the way back to the basic stuff, so you'll see what it, what it looks like when you first get it. And then you don't, you'll not, you're not going to have one of these. You're not going to have a prism at first. I'll talk about that in a second. But you're going to have just a grip, a chamber, and a barrel. Eventually, you do unlock prisms. And, of course, you also have the cells. You can infuse them. Now, you can change these up individually, as you see me doing right now. This is my strongest setup right now. That's just what I've gotten. What this does is this changes a couple of things. Let's back out of here. Go back here. Let me show you. Now, with the Ossian Repeaters, on your left click, you have your basic shot. That's just your basic attack. Like it says, at higher ranges, it deals less damage. I've seen this deal down to about two damage a hit at the greatest distance you can hit something from. You also have a skill shot ability on right click. This is going to depend on what chamber you've got equipped. With the chamber I've got, well, actually with both chambers I've got, because one is just an upgraded version of the other, I get a missile. It's just a straight line missile that does quite a bit of damage. And that recharges over time. As does the Q, the throne ability. Normally, again, this is, but this is going to depend on what grip you've got, your Q. The one I've got throws out a small buff that you can pick up. What this does is, in my case, it gives increased damage and attack speed to anybody that picks it up. There's a couple of others. There's the Marksman Chamber I haven't unlocked yet, which is, like it says, fires a shot in the line, damages and marks a behemoth part, increasing shot damage done against the part hit. So basically it acts like a temporary buff similar to the Warpike's wound, uh, weak spots you can make. And then there's also a different grip that I've that I can't, I have the schematics for it, I just haven't unlocked it because I don't have the parts. The Saboteur's Grip, which throws a mine that arms after a short period and can damage the behem uh, behemoth that walks over it. Now, there's also reloading, of course, because you have, by default, I don't know if there's a way to increase these later on, but by default there are 12 shots in your repeaters. I think that's basically going to stay the same, though. Now, if you just hit R, you can reload at any time, and your and your your guns are going to function exactly how I just described them. However, you'll notice at the bottom over here, there is something called empowered reload. Like it's reloading close to the behemoth absorbs some of its energy, empowering shots and abilities for a short period. What this basically means is that your basic attacks, your Q or your left click, is going to do more damage, but each of your abilities is also going to get some extra buff. So for example, the ballistic chamber that I've got, instead of firing a single straight line missile, I fire three missiles out in a bit of a cone. 
that spread out farther out. It's entirely possible to hit a behemoth with all three, even from a decent distance, because they don't spread out very much. Now the Marksman Chamber further increased bonus damage and grants a small bonus to friendly attacks, so you can actually act as a long-range version of a Warpike with this. The Captain's Grip, which I've got, when, when you throw out your Q, the little buff on the ground, anybody that picks it up gives that buff to everybody on your team. Personally, I only throw out the... If I'm in a party, I only throw out my uh, that buff if I've got it in power, because it, it just helps a lot better. And the Saboteur's Grip, the mine does more damage, and this is actually where your boop is going to come from. Yes, I'm using the term boop, because that is the that is the terminology we use in the game. Because the mine, when empowered, can actually cause interrupts. Now, we're going to do what I usually... I'm going to do what I usually do. I'm just going to go do a quick little basic hunt here in the Monstrous Verge. We're just going to go find an Asher. Uh, do a private hunt. Now... The barrel is going to determine what element you've got. The one I'm using right now is the advanced version of the ice barrel. I don't have the basic one. I've got a basic, the basic barrel, which is the one you start with, basic fire and basic lightning. I do not have a basic ice barrel just because I didn't have the parts for it at the time. I still don't actually, I don't think. It's also gonna change up the look. Now, one thing I should note I'm going to be talking for quite a lot on this. One thing I should note is that normally in the loadout, you can go into your loadout here. Under normal circumstances, you could go and modify your repeaters in the loadout, but there is currently a bug with the ver with this version. Keep in mind, I'm recording this on October 4th, so I'm recording this the day after the repeaters were released. There is, a current, there is currently a known bug that Phoenix Labs are aware of that you cannot... It will mess up your game if you try to modify your repeaters in the airship. So if you're gonna modify them, do it in town. Do it in Ramsgate. All right, let's go ahead and give you guys a, an example of what this looks like. Alrighty, first off, we're gonna do the basic demonstration. Now, if you're wondering, you you do have a basic roll. You don't have a special dodge like the chain blades do. But here we go. This is the this is the interface. This is how this works with the repeaters. And you can just the attack speed is actually pretty pretty quick. Now you might notice the sound changes as you as you low, get lower on ammo. Eventually, it just makes a very bizarre clicking noise. That's just your sign that hey, you're about to be out of ammo. All right, let's go ahead and draw these again. One thing to note: if you can hear that click. I don't know if you can, I'm not sure if that's going to come through on the recording. That is me hitting sprint. That is one thing I've noticed. These, When you have the repeaters drawn, you can't sprint. Alright, let's go ahead and show you guys real quick what, these, what the other attacks look like. First off, here's the basic missile. Takes a second to charge, fires off. Now, as you can see in the top left up there underneath my stamina bar, it shows you left click, I have 12 shots. Right click is currently recharging. When that bar turns light blue, in just a second, like that, I can now fire again. The Q is that greenish yellow bar. Throw this out. This is when it's this is when it's not empowered, it just shows one sword. You go pick it up, and you get the buff. Now anybody on your team can pick that up and get the buff. Which is a good thing to note because the repeaters are actually kind of a support weapon at the end of the day. Now again, it'll recharge. And it's ready again, so I could use it again. I'll try and show you what the empowered version of that looks like. I might forget. If I do, I, if I do, please forgive me because, I mean, this is a basic Nasher. I've got armor thick enough that I can probably tank everything it throws at me. But I'd really rather not get hurt because, oh, there it is. Now the reason I said a minute uh, at the start of this video that. I'm pretty sure these are going to get nerfed. I was fighting... One of the... The way to unlock parts is Janik Zai, the Ostian that is a firearms expert, apparently. And there you see I'm doing like 57 damage. I back up. I'm going to start doing less damage. Alright. Now, uh, real quick, I'm going to stop talking about Janik Zai for a second so I can show you. It's going to flip over. 
When it says reload close to the behemoth, it means close to the behemoth. You'll see that funnel of ether, of ether energy or stuff. Here's what this empowered one looks like. It has three swords, and here's the empowered missiles. That can do a ton of damage. Also, you fire a little bit faster, and your attacks will do more damage when your, when your guns are empowered. And yes, you can do elemental stuff. There's a regular reload. But anyway, uh, Janixai will give you various quests to unlock more parts. It involves hunting things a lot. I don't have one currently, I don't think. No, I don't. Because now all I have to do is get the get the parts from monsters. But for example, the first quest to even get these, you go talk you go talk to the blacksmith, and he'll tell you about the Oscar Peters. You go talk to Janik Zai, he'll be like, yeah, okay, and he'll give you the basic one, the basic ones I showed you. You can upgrade each part individually as well. It takes a lot of Arcanite, so could buy, say goodbye to your Arcanite supplies if you've been saving them up. But yeah, see the missiles actually do a ton of damage. 520. But anyway, the reason I was saying earlier that I think these are going to get nerfed a lot is because during one of the hunts I had to do, my team and I, all four of us were using these things. We took down... Uh, which one was it? Uh, yeah, it was the Firebrand Charog. Because to unlock the first elemental tier, the basic fire, lightning, and ice barrels. You have to hunt down either a regular Charog or a fri Firebrand Charog. It doesn't really matter which. This is a good time to reload right there, because... But anyway, once you've done that, it unlocks the three basic barrel, uh, three basic elemental barrels. And then Janik's eye starts giving you quests to find, or to fight more things. Specifically after you fight the first Charog and unlock the barrels, you get a quest to hunt down four behemoths in the Maelstrom. A Ragedale Nasher, a Shockjaw Nezaga, a Frostback Pengar, and, and, the, and a Firebrand Charog, so... If you want to just make it easier on yourself and hunt the regular Charog for the, to unlock the barrels, that's perfectly understandable. Once you, once you beat them, you unlock the advanced stuff. But you see how quick this was? I mean, these are not even fully upgraded. And this took me... five minutes. Almost just under six. But... Like I was saying, my team of four against the Firebrand for the advanced elemental barrels, we, it did not, the thing didn't even manage to run. We beat a Maelstrom level behemoth in under six minutes. These things are absurdly strong. So, I fully expect them to be nerfed pretty soon. Now, as you go, you'll start unlocking more stuff. Like the, I have access, like I said, I have access to the Saboteur's Grip. I just haven't got the parts for it because that one you have to hunt a Razorwing Karabak. And then the first two prisms you get, I at first thought it was going to be the Resicuri. It's actually not. The first two prisms you get, you unlock after he sends you to hunt a Deadeye Quill Shot. Now. A full team working together with these things is insane. Especially if you're good, because you'll the high risk, high reward style of being a close in gunner can actually do quite a bit of damage. I managed to run off a of frost frostback pengar solo with the with these things once. I didn't win the fight, but it ran away from me, and I managed to stay. I managed to keep it at bay for a while. So yeah, that's kind of a basic primer on the Ostian repeaters. Expect to see these a lot for a while until people either get bored or just decide, okay, that's I've done what I wanted to with these things. I still expect these to become a very popular weapon because A, they're guns, and people like guns in games like this, especially because it lets you stay back and not die. And B, they're until they get until they get nerfed, and I'm fully expecting it, 
these things are probably one of the hardest hitting weapons in the game right now. Not in terms of individual hits, because individually, at, a, at their maximum distance, they're pathetically weak. But they fire so quickly, and you can make it quicker with your lantern, with cells, with a lot of different stuff. These things are probably going to be a favorite weapon for a lot of people. So, expect to see them quite a bit. Real quick, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to infuse, because I haven't actually done that yet. Alright, so we do have... And a, a weapons or a uh, a sword cell. Hmm. Let's get a. F and we also have a bo a body cell or a wing cell. I like to do stamina regen just because it's, I, I use a lot of stamina normally. Although these things don't actually use much stamina because you're firing you're firing from a distance. You're not running around. You have to dodge quite a bit, but then again, it's the fact that these are kind of in between a support and a DPS is interesting. Because on the one hand, you can build a support by using the captain's grip, which gives you the buff, or you can go solidly aggressive by using something like either chamber will do aggression, but the saboteur's grip is big. I've seen a lot of people using that. I hope you guys enjoyed this, because these are an interesting weapon, and I'm going to have to play around with them a lot more. But until next time, folks. These are b If you enjoyed, please be sure to like or favorite the video. You can also leave a comment down below if you have anything you'd like to say. And if you want to keep up with me, never miss any of my current series, and consider joining the squadron by subscribing to the channel. That does help me out, and I really do appreciate it. As for that, folks, I have been D. Our allies from Ostia have provided quite the fun new toy for the Slayers out there. Let's see how the Maelstrom likes us now. But until then, good night and good gaming.